Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and we're back here with Sim Airport. A few days have moved on since the last episode, largely so I can try and recoup some of the money I spent, uh, you might even say overspent, <laughs> in designing the, uh, the baggage system and the rest of the stuff that I've been doing in the last couple of episodes. We've lost an awful lot of money, so I thought it was time to, to bring some back. So I've moved on a few days, and as you can see, things are looking up. We've now got a million back into the bank balance. Our daily profit is looking very good so far. Half past eight in the evening. Uh, we do get a big chunk taken out of that when we buy fuel at 11, but currently sitting on over $150,000 in profit, which is very nice. However, I'm going to start with a gripe. Yes, I am, because the, this game spiked my results a couple of days ago. If we have a look on the finance tab, the perfect ops bonus. I've missed a few days because, as you know, I had issues with my early morning scheduling. But that I've got sorted out. In fact, we can have a look at that here. Look, 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 green, green numbers everywhere. And they're all fully boarded and everything. Everything is looking really, really good. But on day 16, I got a, I did not get the perfect ops bonus. But the interesting thing is, compare it, say, to day 13. Here you can see I had people missing flights, I had flights delayed, and I got a list here of the flights that were affected. So, yeah, I can fully understand I didn't deserve that bonus. On day 16, however, where's the report? There were no problems with any flights, apparently, and that really annoys me because, and unfortunately you can't see the details because that was the day before yesterday, so I don't think. Uh, can I get it here? The day before? Yeah, I can't see it here because it's, it's just one day too far <laughs> into the past. Um, but I'll put a screenshot up here, uh, I think, if I've got, I think I took one, so I'll put one up uh, just to show this off. Um, so the perfect loss bonus was lost here because I had two flights during that day which were scheduled to have no passengers departing from the airport. So they arrived fully, well, boarded. They had people on board when they arrived. They were taken off, transferred, did all the stuff they were supposed to do. They had no passengers scheduled to take away. And obviously no passengers turned up to get on that flight. So for me, that's a success. OK, the airlines might not have wanted <laughs> might not have wanted to take passengers on that flight for some reason so there might have been an issue but there was no other indication that I could see of why there were no passengers scheduled on those flights so why should I then be penalized because nobody turned up to take those flights yeah it's it's just annoying um, I had a quick look at, look on the search for on the steam forums uh, and couldn't find any particular uh, guidance on why this might happen um, and the airlines that were affected, I, um, the, this screenshot will tell you, but by memory, I think it was Aer Lingus and TUI. I did have quite a poor reputation with TUI, uh, and I'll deal with that in a moment. It was around 20-something percent, but it's gone up, gone up quite a lot since to 38. Aer Lingus, uh, 46. That, again, was, has always been around the 40-plus mark, so that's always been reasonably good. So I've and they've had other flights which were perfectly operational that came in, deposited passengers and took passengers away. So I don't understand why those two flights were missing uh, passengers. But anyway, enough of me moaning and groaning. Uh, what are we doing today? I'm not entirely sure, but I have done a couple of things. The TUI thing to start with, uh, you may notice this area, which I've not looked at for a while, it's a little bit bigger and there's a new office in there, a sales rep. Uh, Kira Ria, you are indeed. And she is actually a sales rep for TUI. Uh, there she is, she is the rep. Uh, does it tell me that? Uh, there you are. It doesn't tell me which one it is, but one of the sales reps uh, is now with TUI. And that's because the communication here was very, very low for TUI. Um, so I had a 20-something percent rating with them, which I thought... I could do better than that. I need better than that. So they will give me more flights. So I just built a little office, put a sales rep in there, put a sales rep in there and assigned her to TUI. Uh, and that's improved things quite a lot. Oh, uh, actually on that same page, which we were just looking at, you can see 
I put two flights early morning. Yes. Um, because I need to get more money in. And I want to, want to delay getting a loan as long as I can. Because that obviously will eat into my profit figures. Um, so I want to get a couple more flights in. I just hopefully build up that perfect operations bonus um, if I can as well. But the extra flights will be good. So I put two in early morning. Uh, they're fairly large flights. EasyJet, a maximum of 124. Air Lingus, a maximum of 185. Just the two, because as we've discussed before, uh, British airports generally, certainly those near cities like Bristol is, uh, do have limitations on overnight early morning flights. Uh, they have a quota that they can use throughout particular seasons and throughout the year, uh, which is why on the staff schedule, I renamed the sort of pre-check-in period, whatever I called it before, I've forgotten already, I've renamed it EMA quota, just to reflect that, that these are part of a small quota of flights they can run. Uh, and I actually extended that to two o'clock in the morning. But I've played through the game with these early morning flights uh, a little bit already. And people do turn up very early, as we know, for flights. Uh, so I'm not sure having them there at two o'clock will be enough. We shall see. I, I also added in uh, a fourth uh, bag scanner here into that early morning uh, schedule. So I also had to add in the remote bag scanner monitor there as well. Uh, mainly because, uh, if we go into building here, if we visualize the queues, um, these... <sighs> These three here on the left are tied into this remote bag scanner here. Uh, that's that security station. Um, but this queue, this ID check, and this bag scanner are all tied in together. So if anyone's in that queue, they should have option to go to both those. Um, but because I put that bag scanner linked into this remote station here, I've had to get that one in as well. I could put the put four of them on the one remote station. Um, but I think if I remember the rules correctly, that does reduce somewhat the efficiency of those those bag scanners. Uh, I've also added in another check-in desk in here uh, with a coach queue. Uh, and they, she also, is it a she? Is diff yep, today you're a she anyway. Um, I'm not sure if they always have the same people at the desk each day. We might see that tomorrow. Um, I've also put that extra desk on early morning as well. So hopefully they will be able to cope with that early influx of passengers, both for the first flights of the normal schedule, the 6 a.m. flights, as well as those two very early morning flights. So let's have a look at our performance yesterday. A profit of 56 grand. I'm quite happy with that. The fuel... Yeah, it's it's kind of touch and go with the market as it stands. I made nearly 25 grand in profit, so I'm happy with that. Uh, everything else is looking okay, actually. Uh, I actually increased slightly my um, commercial pricing. So I put the runway charge up to 600 from 500 and the terminal usage uh, to $20 as opposed to 15 Which brings me on to... Um, if I got your name right, I'm doing, I was only corresponding, I was only re replying to your comments earlier today. Uh, Lieutenant Thumper uh, commented on a number of these videos, uh, the first couple anyway, uh, with a number of interesting uh, observations about the airline operate, the airport operation where he lives, uh, Atlanta, uh, compared to Bristol. Obviously, the Atlanta airport is a major international hub, and apparently, I don't know if it still is, but certainly has been the busiest airport in the world. Yeah, so it's a little bit bigger than <laughs> Bristol. Let's put it like that. Um, so, so yeah, so he, we were talking about the revenue for the airport. Most airports gain revenue not from ticket sales or from retail sales from the franchise outlets and coffee shops. Uh, they're all sort of provided to third parties. So other companies take care of providing uh, coffee shops and the like and so on. Uh, and likewise, ticket sales. Uh, the ticket sales go straight to the airline, not to the airport. Uh, so, in a sense, that commercial pricing of terminal usage is my cut of the airline's ticket price. So, yeah, thank, thank you, Lieutenant Thumper. Um, it was an interesting conversation, that. So, quite interesting. Uh, getting some nice insights into airport operation. Okay, so, how are these flights shaping up? 
Okay, so we've got a while to go. How long have you got to go? You've got two hours. You've got an hour and a half plus to go. Okay, they're queuing up down there. That's looking quite good. This looks like it might work. They've got to be, they, they're leaving. Yeah, half past five. Yep, uh, we should be okay. If this works, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, I, I need extra money for a couple of things, which is why I sort of run the game on for a couple of days, is I want to complete the baggage system. So we actually have arriving baggage as well, taking through our sort of baggage system here into the baggage carousels here properly. Uh, and also, as has been noted, um, uh, uh, JC, I, I do, I do apologise. <laughs> I don't remember your your ID. Um, that uh, the walk that passengers have to make from ticket desk through security up to their gate is quite long. It's a it's a very inefficient U shape, which I, I think is kind of how Bristol works. I've not actually travelled from Bristol for many years, so I'm not quite sure what the distances are. That people do need to travel so yeah this is quite a distance to walk so i was hoping to put some travelators or moving walkways up here but they're expensive they really are uh they're called walkways in here i think aren't they moving walkway there you go i mean it's what is that 10 11 grand for a single square so going say from here up to there 200 grand i can't afford that just yet well I could, but I don't want to. <laughs> so I, I want to, because we still deal, we do still want to put the first floor on this building, which is where security and the departure lounge should properly be, and all this should be just ticketing, really, and and indeed arrival area. The arrival area should be a bit bigger. Okay, um, I'm almost scared now to look. We got away with it. Excellent! <laughs> Our first two early morning flights left an hour early. Fully boarded. Oh, I am so pleased with that. Which means, all being well, I've got no zero passenger flights here. No, we should get away with it. We should get a perfect operations bonus. Uh, actually, today's... Ah, okay, this is our biggest flight. Easy jet on A2. 127. We've had for a few days now been getting a couple of flights with over 120 passengers. Uh, did we have one yesterday? I'm sure I did. There's 101 there. Was that the biggest yesterday? Yeah, we're getting some now which are getting quite busy in terms of numbers. So uh, we do need to make sure our airport is running efficiently. Another thing I noticed was this gate here at the top, which is the furthest walk, which I kind of thought to myself, I'll use this for the small airlines, not the easy jets or the Wizz Air or the TUI, whatever, um, but for the smaller internal UK flights uh, like Logan Air, like uh, Arigny, uh, and also for Lauda, which, oh gosh, is that Austrian? I did know this. <laughs> I did make a comment on it, I'm sure, when I put them into the schedule. Um, they're, they're, again, they're a fairly small carrier, as I understand it. But they actually have some fairly large flights in their schedule. Uh, so we're looking at gate three here. So the Logan Air, uh, what's that? Uh, 37 maximum. The Origny, the Channel Airlines, 100 maximum. Actually, that's fairly large. TUI, though. 140, the louder ones, 150. They need to be in a, a gate which is closer, I think, to the uh, departure lounge. So I would like to move them. I'd like to reschedule those flights to perhaps another remote gate, because that appears to be working quite efficiently. Uh, and that would be, it could be that one. Or it might be... There, I am planning to put two gates up here, but again, my schedule is fairly tight as it is, uh, as you've seen. Uh, so we, I don't know if that will happen. How's our working is going today? Uh, we're looking, we're looking on form. Right. So what I'll do is, I don't think I'm going to build anything today. 
is I will forward through this. Uh, we'll have a, a, a lovely sexy video effect and we'll come back at the end of the day and we'll plan to do some building, uh, exciting or otherwise. I'll, I'll leave it up to you to decide uh, in, the, in the remainder of this episode. Okay, so here we are at the end of the day. Uh, pretty much the same part of the day we've, we started with. <laughs> uh, the last three flights are at, uh, well, en route or at gate. They're, they're being processed anyway, so they're coming in. And so far today, everything has gone very nicely indeed. Uh, one thing I didn't look at when we were checking out, uh, when I was sort of going through the analysis uh, early in the first part of this episode, look at that today's profit, two quarter of a million, $250,000, excellent. Uh, yeah, I did get my perfect ops bonus for yesterday, uh, and this, as, as we know, increments every day you get it, so, you know, so there's a reward for doing it on a, con on a regular uh, ongoing basis. So 27 flights, eight grand, that's always very nice to have in the back pocket. So today should be even more. How are we doing? Have they? They're about to go. So I think we're on, in line for another perfect ops reward. And our profit figure. Wow. Okay, so fuel. Yeah, it cost us uh, 145,000, but we sold a lot. So our overall profit for yesterday was over a hundred grand. I am very happy with that indeed. So our bank balance has stayed at one million. Result. Okay, so what should we do today? I'm thinking we might as well complete the baggage system. Right, so our baggage system. I put a marker down in the planning mode. That's where my baggage area is at the moment. And there's, there's two things uh, we could do here. We could either uh, route everything through our super big hub here, which is to be honest, bigger than I need, but then it was cheaper. <laughs> so we go in here. Yes, yeah, so the big baggage hub, which is a modded version, is a grand. And it gives me, I think it's 10 ports. Whereas the baggage hub here is more than twice the price at two and a half grand and only gives me six ports, I think, in total. Um, so we could route it there, but doing that means we would have to go underground again to the next level to get to that, because the way I very badly <laughs> arranged my existing infrastructure in terms of the fuel pipe uh, and this uh, underground car park. So I could either put in a new baggage hub here for this incoming uh, baggage from the arriving aircraft, the arriving passengers, and run it on this same level. Uh, so I'd pay extra for the pub, but it might cost me less in terms of building foundations and the like. So I'm tempted to do that, I think, is actually put that on this very same level. So what we're going to need then, uh, we're going to need some foundation down here. So let's get into the building. <laughs> Pretend you know what you're doing, man. Right, so we're going to want some foundation down here. Uh, it'll probably want to be at least that big because it always puts walls around everything. Okay, and we're going to need to extend this here. So it takes out uh, the conveyor belt, that's the word I was looking for, <laughs> conveyor belt. So actually, let's, where's that going to go? So if we put our conveyor, our, our new baggage hub in around here somewhere, I think. If I put that in here, uh, if I put it, no, let's put it that way around. If I put that in there, that should work okay, I think. Yeah, put that in there. Right, we'll wait for the guys to come in and build that. Uh, actually, I don't really need to do that. Right, let's put some foundation in, because we're going to have it going in here. So it needs to be, like, so wide, I think. And then we'll take it down like that. Okay, I think that's how it will look. Oh, actually, uh, oh, how many building... Oh, yeah, because the runway is uh, under 80% in condition. So they're going to be very busy maintaining that. 
Meanwhile, I've got... Oh, heck. Oh, they are busy. They are doing it. Good. Good. Okay, that's, that's splendid. <laughs> uh, that's a point, actually. Uh, we haven't looked at it in this series, but there is a maintenance tab here. So you can schedule when they start maintaining uh, real main maintenance work uh, and uh, how long they have to complete it within. So they've got to do it within f by four o'clock in the morning, uh, which is actually... Is that before the... Yeah, the planes are arriving before them. So, yeah, that's a bit tight, that actually. <laughs> but, which is probably why you actually want quite a lot of builders. So they can do those sort of jobs in quick order. Right, uh, again, we'll just skip forward while while they do all this. And I'll just keep an eye on the flight schedule. Oh, has he left already? He has. Oh, good. It looks like I managed to judge that uh, staff schedule and the flight schedule properly. That makes a refreshing change. It really, really does. Uh, okay. Not quite sure why they've shifted the building work over there, but it makes no real difference to me, I suppose. Uh, we don't need that plan in colour anymore. Before going back here. I mean, it may actually depend on what equipment or what supplies they have coming in. As to which bits they go to build first. I mean, you can obviously, as we've seen, prioritise certain certain jobs, but uh, we haven't done that here. Okay, and we're going to actually. This probably needs to be a bit bigger, I think. Actually, let's get up here. So we're going to put in. Uh, how we've got? Let's have a look. What are you assigned to? You're assigned to uh, one, two, three. Or oh, you're assigned to all four of the main gates. Yeah. So if they're using, so if the planes are using the standby gate, they don't get baggage service through the through the uh, baggage carts. That's all delivered by our men in their golf carts. Okay. So that's four. But we do sometimes have four flights in at one time. We probably do need three carousels, don't we, I think. I don't think I'll get away with two. But saying that, you don't often see this filled up. Let's, let's see how much those carousels cost. Uh, they're, they're all going to cost the same five grand. Yeah, five grand. So we want to bring the luggage in from below. So that's going to be you. Uh, OK, now this is the trick. Can I work out which way round <laughs> this goes? OK, I suspect... Oh, it comes in from... Yeah, from the bottom there as we're looking at it now. So we're going to need... Ooh, yeah, it needs to be that way around, I think. Yeah, so we have space for our conveyor belts to come in from the top as we're looking at this picture here. I think I've got that right. Well, let's put one in. I've got it the wrong way around. <laughs> Excellent job, that man. Honestly. Right. It's... Oh... Well, yeah, I, I'm no, I'm, I'm. That's just me feeling annoyed be, because I'm confused by things uh, from below. Yeah, because I was looking at that symbol at the top to say this is the where the bags come in, but uh, obviously I was mistaken. Have I, st I still got it the wrong. I've still got it the wrong way around. You great prank, plank. Uh, no. Right, let's let's see if I can do it. Third time lucky, eh? From below, that's you. Right, that's better. Okay, so we're going to need. We're going to have a conveyor belt. Oh, there it is. Uh, 
We can have you running out that way. Now we can't have it that can't have the next one there. It has to go in above. So yeah, it'd be nice if it came in. At, yeah, okay. Let's let's work on that basis. I think now. Can I lay conveyor? I can along here, and it will build the foundation for me automatically. So that will need to come out of this hub here. Okay, you can't build there, but we'll build there and see how that works. Okay, once again, let's get the guys working on that while we quickly check our flights. Everything's looking good so far. Loads of passengers. Okay, I'm losing a lot of money now because I'm spending it all on buying things. That's why you... Oh, that was finished. That was quick. Right, so that's that. So let's get the next one in. Uh, from below. There we go. Put you in there. Uh, actually, no. Let's move you a long one. So you're in there, I think. We might actually even be able to get four in there, which would be cool. Right, how are we doing? Right, let's demolish some of these walls. And we can put some conveyor in there. Can I put conveyor in there? No, not before you've finished uh, deleting it. Okay, fair enough. And conveyor belt. Where are you? There you are. A bit in there. Some in there. And some going around the corner here. Why can I not put conveyor in there? Okay. Got me slightly worried now. Okay. Let's dismantle you. Sure, I definitely can. Oh, it's because they're going in the wrong directions. So that'll be why. So that needs to be a producer. That's better, yeah, because you're then you're sending out bags out to the consumer unit here, which is the baggage carousel. Ah, you see, there's logic to it. There you go, that worked perfectly. Right, uh, and likewise, you will be a producer, and I think we'll have you as a producer. Oh, you are a producer already, that's fine. Uh, okay, good. So this baggage hub here uh, needs to go uh, up and along there. And we can build conveyor up. Well, I think that lines up. Yep. Well, the sound effect, I don't know if you, again, I keep the sound, the game sound quite low. I don't know if you hear, could hear that, but that's, that aircraft engine sounded like a huge, great blazing inferno. Uh, now, there, there are, I believe, events in the game, so it is possible for fires to erupt within the airport. Um, so I was slightly worried that that was going on, um, which uh, I wouldn't be able to cope with. Oh no, it was delayed. By three minutes. Will I get my perfect ops bonus for that? Ah, shucks. Right, but everything else... Oh, you were a bit delayed as well. By two minutes. And you were a passenger short. Oh. Oh, that's a shame. Okay. Right, well, we'll, we'll carry on with with this work anyway 
And we're still looking, oh, we're, we're looking less unprofitable, which is always a good sign. So how are we doing down here, guys? Let's get rid of some of this wall. Uh, that's the dismantle button you want. And that, there, there. Oh, there's too many little bits of wall. Uh, put our conveyor into. There we go. And there, there, there. And, whoops, finally there. Okay, and then we will have conveyor. There we go. Coming out of here. And I think again, just going down here and then along to there, I think. It, so that's that one, that one. Yeah, I think it needs to go there and then I can bring it into this area here. Excellent. Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, I think we're okay if they are slightly delayed. But if we're missing passengers at all, then that's our perfect ops bonus gone. Ah, oh, disappointing. Okay, oh, we're running to the end of the day already. Doesn't time fly when you're um, building stuff? Come on, guys. Let's bear from you. Oh, we need some... Demolition of walls here as well. There, there, and there. So we can get some conveyor in to our hub to deliver to our carousels. Actually, this is quite good. This should then be ready for tomorrow's schedule. That's excellent. All being well. Because uh, the, the runway is the biggest of their ma of the maintenance task my guys have to take care of. So that's in perfect condition now, or near near enough. So we shouldn't have to worry about them taking time out to do that. So they can focus on doing. I need some more wall demolishing. That's you there and there and down there. Okay, yeah, I think that's fine. Then we can put some conveyor in. Up there, and there. I just want to change, oops, this hub, that point there to be a consumer. And we can then connect those up with more conveyor belt. Green, I like the look of that colour. You're coming in there, so where's our next carousel going? Oh, everyone's leaving for the day. Thanks, chaps. That's fine. You've done a really good job, despite the uh, the lack of performance on the departure of my aeroplanes. Yeah, okay, we'll forgive you. Baggage from below, and you have to be that way around. Oh, we can easily get four in here, can't we? Oh, we could probably uh, we probably need to extend the baggage zone, don't we? <laughs> yeah, because I suppose we need it to be on the other side of the carousel as well. Okay, so if we slip you in there, and let's do a little bit of rezoning baggage, and extend you out there. Oh, one other little thing I did because I knew it would get in the way. I moved the digital ad display out here. Um, it was around here before, so it was kind of in the way of the baggage system and the people going to collect their bags. So it should get everyone coming down yeah, through arrivals. So that should be fine. Uh, there we go. How are we doing here with this? Ah, right, okay. So we can put in our final. Oops, not queues, it's utilities. Bit of conveyor belt. Down here. There you go. Well, that looks like the system should work. Yeah, so we've got the depot. Ah, now here you see that uh, the exclamation mark has gone. Uh, I think as I annotated on the previous video, the exclamation mark there was simply saying, it's not that it wasn't connected to a hub, 
It's just that it wasn't connected, uh, that both sides weren't connected. So it wasn't sending out any baggage to be collected at a baggage carousel. So because I'd only completed the arriving, sorry, the departing baggage here that's going out onto the planes. So now, uh, do I need to set these carousels up? I don't think I do. I think they're taken care of automatically. Yeah, I think that's automatic. Actually, one thing I was thinking of doing is because we have done it already um, in the schedule is gate A2 is exclusively used by EasyJet is I could assign that to EasyJet as their gate but I'm wondering if it's worth doing now before I've actually got into, into negotiations with them which is kind of the mid to late game of, of Sim Airport uh, to offer me more flights if I'd if it have more weight if I offered it to them as part of a negotiation rather than just being given to them for for no good reason okay so what's going on down here so we've got baggage going up people are waiting around the carousels Baggage is going through. Oh, I love. I, I just love this little animation. <laughs> just bags being sorted and sent out to the carousels. Why is that showing that? Are you not working? So you're all going out. You are a completed length of carousel. You're definitely. Definitely connected. Uh, interestingly, it's called bag one. I uh, is that because I've got it highlighted? No, it's not. Okay, let me just delete that little bit of carousel. Uh, sorry, car of conveyor belt, and then put it back in again. See if that helps. Because there's no reason why it wouldn't come this way. At all. Unless it needs to actually come down into it like these do. That strikes me as being rather odd. And I'd rather it didn't do it that way. Because <laughs> there isn't room. Oh, it does work. Excellent. Even before they finish building it. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, and the little symbol's gone. It must have been some issue with the way I constructed that conveyor belt in parts, maybe. Yep, yeah, that's looking healthier. I really like that. That is good. Yeah, my airline interest is, uh, is continuing to increase. Oh, we've got a standby usage. Why is that? That looks interesting. So, why did that happen? Uh oh. Yeah, gate A1. You're still there. Why? I, why are you there? Still. You are very. You are running very late. Although you're. No, you're not kind of thing oh no no you are you are running mm -hmm. yeah that's curious oh dear and our departure there was late ow okay so yesterday the first day of early morning or well, the second well yeah no the first day of early morning operation was a fluke <laughs> we're not going to get perfect ops again today did we actually get it yesterday no uh, because of those couple of people who've missed their flights oh oh that is so annoying 
but I did get it the day before. Oh, right. How, how many days have I, have I missed today? Sorry, I've been so busy building. I've, I've, I've quite missed the fact that we've uh, carried on a day. Oh, right, okay. Uh, that was our first day, which you didn't really see. Uh, I, I'm losing track of time already. But you know what I'm not losing track of time of? And that is how long this video has been going on for. So it's probably around time to finish. And there's me thinking we'd finish on a continuing high of successful flight operations. But it looks like we're not. Uh, so we're going to have to... That, there's it, done it again. Whiz Air. Zero passengers required. Why? I, I don't know. Something odd is going on here. I'm not quite sure why. If you're that much more familiar with the game, then please do let me know. Um, or I may attempt to engage in some search and inquiry on the Steam forums and see if what I'm seeing is logical. But yeah, that is that is very annoying because that itself will simply will mean I won't get the perfect operations bonus. Although I am fulfilling all the requirements. The plane arrives, it leaves well before time because there's nobody to wait for, and none of the no passengers turn up. So it's fine. Apart from all these other little errors I've got at the top of the day, but yeah, that by the by, it's a, just that one f early morning flight. Oh, okay, you actually arrived early, but you left yeah twenty odd minutes late. Shame. Right, well there you are. I I yeah, kind of a downbeat note to finish on, but that's gaming for you, I suppose, isn't it? But whatever. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Sim Airport. If you have, it'd be lovely to hear from you. A simple like, a click on the old thumbs up button would be wonderful. Be good to hear from you in that way. But even better, there's so many people here leaving. <laughs> even better, if you've got anything to say, uh, any hints, tips, any recommendations, suggestions, criticisms, anything at all to say, especially if you know about Bristol Airport. I'd love to hear from you <laughs> as to how it actually works. Um, but uh, just drop a note into the comments box below, of course. It'd be wonderful. It'd be really good to hear from you. And, of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you can do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play videos. But from me, Ajax Post, struggling once again, so it appears, in Sim Airport. I'll see you again soon. But until then, bye-bye for now.